Hi, I'm Stephanie Sullivan Ruiz. I own W3 Conversions, where I do front end development. And as such, I'm seeing a lot of clients starting to come to me, whether it's um, a client wanting a website or an agency that I'm building uh, the front end development for, saying, please do this in HTML5. We want HTML5 but they really don't know what HTML5 is. HTML5 has sort of gotten confused with a marketing term that includes a lot of new technologies, including CSS3, WebStack, JavaScript APIs, and those are all new and they're all interrelated, but they aren't HTML5. So today I would like to talk just a little bit about what HTML5 is and then go on to look at one of the hot topics right now, which is uh, native video. Uh, HTML5 came from two different specs. One was uh, web applications. This is why you see a lot of JavaScript. And the other was web forms. And what they were really attempting to do as they evolved HTML4 was to make it simpler for developers, to make things more semantic, to take things that they were already using, for instance, the naming conventions. Uh, everybody uses header and footer, things like that. Now we have those elements. Um, native form controls and new inputs and validation, those are all added in because that's what we did with JavaScript already. The same thing with the rich media that we'll talk about today. Audio and video are big on the web, and so a way to add it more simply is what was given to us with HTML5. So let's look at how that actually works and when to use it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the new um, paving the cow paths. Um, we're adding in things that were already working and supported across all browsers, but weren't actually valid. So if you wanted your page to validate, you couldn't add a plugin using the embed tag. Now we can actually do that. There's no problem. We just add a source, uh, tells where the resource is being embedded from. We add a type. You must have a, a valid MIME type. And if you're going to mobile or to uh, a tablet, something like that, and you want to kind of give a different experience, maybe using media queries, um, the one thing you need to remember is you can hide embedded content with CSS, no problem. You can hide it on the page and rearrange your page, but it's actually still going to download. So that's something you need to keep in mind. If you've got a large, uh, say, flash file and you want to hide it for mobile, it's actually still going to try to download that file. But the embed tag, simply source quality, very easy to add. Right now, though, I want to talk about the two hot topics, the native audio and video. These are very similar. One is for sound and one is for movies. They have an area within the tags for content. And this is so that you can say, uh, this is not supported on your browser or your device. Or you can add maybe the fallback content. Um, but it's not for accessibility. It's not for adding in JavaScript to add your subtitles or things like that. There are several. Um, Attributes that are common to all media elements, we have, of course, the source. You've got to know where it is. Preload, autoplay, loop, and then controls. Those are used in all media elements. Then we have something in video called a poster attribute. This is a simple JPEG, PNG, GIF, whatever you want to use. And it's just a picture representing your video. It's so that if no video is available, someone will actually see something instead of an empty space. So if we were adding audio to the page, we would just simply say audio, SRC, my audio, MP3, and close the tag, and we would have audio. Let's look now, though, at how we actually do video. I'm going to go into Dreamweaver. And Dreamweaver has added, since release of, of CS5, the HTML5 pack, which gives us hinting for all kinds of HTML5 and CSS3 tags. So all I do is start typing video, and you'll notice that I get a code hint. And then I say I want to add the source, and I can browse right to that source. I'm going to connect this to my H.264 encoded source. And then I'm going to say uh, your device does not support this video. And close out my tag. Now, I'll save that. And let's go ahead and look at it in Safari. I'm going to preview it there. And notice I've got the actual video showing. I haven't added a poster attribute, but no matter what I do, nothing happens. I have no sound. That's because we've got to add the attribute autoplay. And when we do that, we suddenly have the video playing. But notice 
We have the video playing. We don't have the video stopping. So I'm going to have to close this window to stop the video. That's because, in my personal developer opinion, autoplay except in certain circumstances is poor form. If people are surfing at lunch, on their lunch break, um, in their office, um, and suddenly something's blaring out of their um, speakers, that's not really a good thing. You might get them in trouble. Or someone's surfing like I do with the, my own music on, or you've got headphones on, and suddenly this extra stuff is going on. So that's really not a good thing. So I'm going to take out autoplay, and let's add in the controls attribute, and preview again in Safari and see what's happened to our preview. Notice now I don't have any music blaring. I've got the ability to turn it on, turn it off, scrub it, control my um, sound. And let's look also in Chrome, which is also a WebKit browser. And we'll look here. And notice I have the same thing, but there's a different look to it. That's because native controls all have their own look from browser to browser. So whether you're looking at Opera or um, a Mozilla-based or WebKit-based browser, they all are IE, they all have their own. And that's fine. Your user will get used to seeing that, or you can use JavaScript to create custom controls. We're not going to talk about that right now, though. Let's look in Firefox. In Firefox, ooh, I have a lovely gray X. This is because Firefox does not support the H.264 or MP4 codec. So let's, in a moment, talk in the next video. We'll follow up with what are these codecs and containers, and what do we need to do to make this video play. On my website, W3 Conversions, I have a big list of resources on HTML5 and CSS3. I try to keep it updated because you've really got to stay on top of this these days as a developer. It's exciting, and we have a lot to look at, but we have to stay on top of it. You can also follow me on Twitter, where I'm sometimes useful and sometimes personal, at Steph Soul, and I'll see you soon.